So I just finished making a video about Logan Labs, which is attached to the end of this video. I do want to say it's a longer video, but please watch the whole thing so you really understand the context of what I'm talking about. Uh, I also want to state that the information that I'm talking about in the video only relates to the saturated paste test, not the Malik 3 test. And that I do have the utmost confidence in Logan Labs. It's been a pleasure to work with them all of these years, and I plan on continuing to work with them for years to come. I think they're a wonderful lab, and I really, um, I really do appreciate what they do for our industry. Hey guys, Tad here with Kiss Organics, and I wanted to talk to you about Logan Labs. So starting around August of last year, we started to see a bit of a discrepancy in the soil testing reports that we were getting and that the numbers were reporting a little bit higher, uh, specifically cations, things like chlorides, sodium, sulfur, and major cations like magnesium, uh, potassium, calcium, things like that. And we weren't quite sure what was going on with that and had reached out to Logan and they weren't really sure what the issue was. And I know um, Bryant Mason was also working on this as well. And, and basically, we, they figured out what it was. And I want to give credit to Bryant Mason uh, at Soil Doctor Consulting as well as Logan as to solving this because uh, it's a little bit challenging. And I want to explain exactly what was going on and what the implications are. So what was happening was, uh, starting about last August, the ICP machine that they use for these soil tests, it gets calibrated. And it gets calibrated using two different solutions. In the calibration solutions, they have a low-end solution and a high-end solution. Now, the low-end solution, I, I think Bryant mentioned it was around 4 ppm, um, was fine. But the high-end solution, the one that I think is traditionally 200 ppm, was actually off um, quite a bit. And because of that, it was pushing these results higher. So if you had an actual, you know, in-situ soil, um, topsoil, for example, you wouldn't have seen really a lot of change in results. But if you were running a really fertile living soil, like a lot of us do, um, that's where you start to see the numbers jump up. Um, so that was the challenge. Now it took a long time to figure that out because they kept recalibrating, but they were recalibrating with the same solution and they didn't realize it right away, which to be fair is totally understandable. Um, so what, what the implications of this are, are that if you got a soil test done between um, August to let's mid-March, because uh, this, this situation has been corrected and I just found out about this um, in detail as of last week. So this is all brand new to me, but um, those numbers should have dropped back down into the proper range and the test should be more accurate. But um, if your test result was during that time period, you might've seen some elevated numbers there um, what that means is you might have under applied nutrients, which is really a best case scenario for something like this. You can always add more, but it's harder to take away. So you may have under applied nutrients for a run, or you may have gotten a recommendation to flush for chlorides or sodium where you might have been able to get an extra run in. But I want to be really clear. We're talking like maybe a 20-25% um, increase in total um, cations that we were seeing, so our soluble salt levels and EC would look higher, but um, it's not like if you had 100 ppm of chlorides, traditionally all of a sudden you're going to see a test that shows 400 and you're flushing. Probably what it means is you might have had one more cycle, you might have been able to get in before flushing if you were borderline already. So um, long story short, the issue has been corrected. Like I said, I just found out about the actual solution last week. Prior to that, I'd had conversations with Liz and Trinity and Susan over at the lab. I'd talked to Bryant about it, um, but we didn't really, no one really knew what was going on. And so um, if you'd reached out to me prior to that, I might've just said, you know, I've talked to the lab. We don't know if there is an issue or what's going on. We're just seeing slightly higher elevated numbers. Um, but now we do know what the problem was. And I'm really grateful that to, to know the solution and know that we're moving forward with an answer. And I wanna be really clear that this is not a problem unique to Logan. There's some stuff that Logan does actually really, really well. For example, they do QC um, where they recalibrate their machine every 20 samples. Most labs don't calibrate that frequently or have use a much higher frequency rate. They also are part of some accreditations that require them to be very accurate and they always pass those um, with flying colors. So, I still believe that they're a high quality lab. I believe that their soil tests are something that we can trust and are the best tool, agronomic tool for us to use to make data driven decisions about our fertility in our gardens. Um, and I also wanna be clear that this issue could have been an issue in any lab. Um, this is not unique to Logan. This is a situation where we just had the wrong calibration, but 
I am excited to hear that moving forward, they're gonna do even a further QC step, quality control, where they're gonna be um, anonymizing the data and then looking at averages over time to make sure they don't see any jumps you know, over a period of a month or a period of a quarter that um, would indicate that something might be off with the machinery in terms of calibration. So you know, they're, they're taking all the right steps to correct this issue. Um, for those of you that did discover, I know there were some very vocal people around this that were convinced that there was some stuff going on. Well, in a sense, you were right. Your numbers would have been overreported um, slightly. I would, I would estimate around 20 to 25 percent. So I hope this is helpful. I just want to get this information out and let people know what's going on and reach out if you have any questions. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Bryant, or you can reach out to Logan directly. We, are, we did just record a podcast that I'll be releasing soon between Bryant and I where we go into even further depth on this topic as well as a bunch of other topics. So appreciate everyone. Hope that helps.